apparently it gets super busy, so we thought we'd do it at 8 o'clock when it opens. Look at that car park. Plenty of people here. That's what makes a good photo. Go out and find them. Oh, so we just had our first pack up in the real tropical weather. Like it's, um, it gets hot, heaps hotter, but. Uh, for us, today's humid, today's hot, the sun's out, gun's out, um, but I, I pack up usually, then I have my shower, I packed up, have my shower, and I was still sweating on the other side of my shower, so I tipped a big bucket of water on my head, uh, and a tap, and now we're going to a place that doesn't have uh, power and water, and we've been in tropical Queensland for a while, across the, the north, uh, what do you call it, Tropic Capricorn, but we haven't actually been far north Queensland where it bumps it up a little bit in terms of humidity. So going to a free camp now for a few nights, uh, just down the road, we've only got a five minute drive from our old one. It's by far the shortest we've driven. Uh, it's, what's it called? Yule Beach. Yeah, Yule Beach Farm State. But uh, it's going to be a real test in terms of how we sleep at night, I think. Real we're test for Ash, because Ash We're only play. three minutes away now. <laughs> yeah, we're not, well, yeah, I'm just, I'm going to sweat. Anyway, what we'll, I'm trying to say. we'll see how we go. If we can't stick it out, we'll just go find a caravan park and plug in. Nah, we just, we'll get through it. I'll get through it. I'll bring them with me on the journey. Oh, right. So we're at New Beach Farm Stay now. Literally five minutes down the road. Pretty cool little spot. Um, no power though. There is drinking water just here. And there's a couple of taps along this fence. Mule Beach is just in the background where those palms are. We were there before uh, and checked it out because we got here a bit early, but um, pretty nice little beach. The guy got attacked by a croc there. Uh, start of April and we're start of June at the moment, basically. So he was sleeping on the beach and um, luckily the croc got his, or well, mostly his sleeping bag and a little bit of his feet. So dragged the sleeping bag out while the guy had a chance to escape. So very lucky man. Anyway, um, yeah, I think it's 25, 30 bucks a night here, mum. I don't know, something like that. Set up with a solar, just perfect vision here. There's burrow in here, supposedly. You can swim in here. They've got some canoes and everything as well. So, and they've got the views going back there. Pretty damn nice. A little bit of a breeze coming off the ocean, which is nice. That sun's gonna go setting that way and smack us in the face. Later on, so I kinda want the clouds, but you kinda don't as well to just keep those that solar charge, so yeah, we're gonna be here for two, three nights, I think, and continue north somewhere towards Cooktown, maybe. So, still want to, still got to see Mossman Gorge, do a couple of things down to Port Douglas. We actually went to Port Douglas the other day for a drink. It's kind of, it's kind of got no atmosphere. Like, it, it's the vibe of the place is is one of the, probably the most overrated places I reckon we've been on the whole trip, to be honest. And we, we only spent an afternoon there, went to a happy hour and got some drinks, but. Uh, it's just, it's a little bit soulless for me. All the good stuff might happen behind the closed doors of the big resorts, but not my kind of scene. It doesn't have that atmosphere of say Cairns or Ely or Byron, Noosa, South East Queensland in, in general basically. So we might go check it out again just to, to see if, uh, if my first impressions are wrong. But yeah, not a big fan to be honest, so. Yeah, it's it's a fair way away, so it's a safe way away. But uh, this boat ramp is probably 
like our campsite's probably 400 metres that way. Um, there's a couple of paddocks in between with a couple of big horses and that for lunch that he can chomp on if he wants to go for a midnight uh, walk. But again, it's just so cool to see him in the wild, isn't it? He's massive. There was actually, well, that caravan, that camper van behind us, they are eager bird watchers. And I said, I'd come down here um, without even a minute ago and said, um, is there any crocs? <clears throat> and they're like, not that we can see. And then they started looking through their, their scope that they had. And lo and behold, there's, there's a big one up the river. So. They showed Eva through that scope, which was cool because it just doesn't look like a, a log in the distance end. But yeah, what do you reckon, Bess? Yeah, it's cool. It's 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 bigger than that. It'll be it'll be close to the length of my car, I reckon. It's hard to judge in the distance, but I've got a heap of drone footage as well, so I'll show you some of that, which is really cool. Alrighty, photography tip time. Now I want to take you on a little journey today and talk to you about what makes a good photo. Now it's not always about the quality or the gear that you use. It's not always about pixel peeping and zooming in to the nth degree on your computer after the photo is taken. It's not about how tack sharp that image is. It's how it makes you feel, how it makes others feel. Now that could be the coldness on a winter's day or a stormy day. It could be the warmth, that golden hour of sunshine just smacking you in the face, getting all those feels. It doesn't have to be sharp. It could be the blurriness of a portrait, but it's capturing a moment of that person that's so special to you. I try to use it a lot in my wedding photography. That's the moments that I'm looking for throughout the day. And I even tell my couples that I don't care how many cameras are there. The more cameras are there, the more moments they're capturing. And they don't have to use the gear that I'm using. They can use a phone. They can use a little disposable one that's put on the table in front of them. But that also translates into landscape photography as well. You're looking for light. You're looking for a little bit of color. You're looking for those moments that absolutely make someone feel get all those feels inside them and make them feel good make them feel make them feel like they're a part of the image that's what makes a good photo go out and find them all right so mum's got us up right and early to get mossman gorge in apparently what apparently it gets super busy so we thought we'd do it at eight o'clock when it opens look at that car park plenty of people here so what you need to do is get here early eight o'clock on the trainer but then, yeah, you pay, it's like a five, ten minute bus ride. You can't drive to actually gorge. Don't know what it costs yet, but I think it's like 15, 20 bucks an adult and half price that for kids. So go check out Mossman Gorge. Everyone bangs on about how good it is. So I'm looking forward to this one. I'm not sure whether the bloody teddy bears come to Mossman Gorge, but here they are.
So we've basically got the whole place to ourselves apart from one, one tour group at the moment. So kind of nice, uh, nice just to check out without any crowds to be honest. So mama might have been onto something. We spent probably an hour and a half up at uh, Mossman Gorge or, or where the bus takes you and picks you up from. Uh, if I'm being honest, I, I didn't absolutely love it. it. It wasn't bad, it was still pretty nice, but I think we've been a bit spoilt uh, over the past, what, three weeks or so in this area, like Cairns and uh, Tropical North Queensland, I guess you call it. It's just, there, there wasn't one spectacular element about it. There was no giant drop waterfall. There was no, I don't know, like, no, what am I trying to say? You couldn't see the gorge as such, like you're in it, but you couldn't really see that, like either side and all that sort of thing. So, <clears throat> and then you add the element of paying 40 bucks or whatever. Uh, I think it'd be, Will was free, but everyone else had a fee. So I just think it was a bit too, I don't know, commercial maybe? I don't know what the right word is, but. Um, the Wobbly Bridge was my favorite and the bus was my second. <laughs> No, but like you've got places like Josephine Falls, south of Cairns, you've got places like Babinda Boulders, you've got the Daintree River Ferry to get you into Cape Trib and that whole area up there and the Bloomfield Track. I don't know, I just think we've seen a lot of what we've seen there and had to pay a fee for it as well. And if you hadn't seen any of that other stuff we'd already seen, I'm sure you would think this is really nice. Yeah, look, we're still in the Daintree Rainforest, World Heritage, and it's still bloody beautiful. I actually probably shot more with my camera in there than I have uh, at any other point you know, over the last three or four weeks, just trying to make it interesting for myself. So I tried a few different techniques that I don't usually try with the intentional camera movement, filmed a few little things, just looking for little stuff in the rainforest. But yeah, I don't know. It'd be down the list of things for me to recommend up this way, I reckon. But at least it's easy to access. If you've got kids, like the, the walks are really small and it's all boardwalked and everything. So there's no slipperiness or anything like that. It's really easy. Yeah. And look, I'm not bagging it. 
I'm just saying we've done some better things and I know the money goes to a good cause and all that sort of thing with the, the communities and that up this way. But yeah, I was kind of expected a little bit more. Maybe that was my issue. I wanted my, ex my expectations were too high. So, anything else, Mama? I don't think so. No? Anything else, guys? Mm, no. We just, we just, um, the bus was pretty good and the lovely bridge is good too. And it was Do you steam dimmies on the barbie for lunch? Well, not steamed, they're, they're kind of a cross between steamed and um, and fried. They come out, so just flip them over, give them a few minutes to see the side. Uh, we chuck them in the microwave first just to get them away from frozen. But yeah, after uh, after fish and chips last night, which was delicious by the way, uh, we thought, well, we'll get some dimmies. We haven't had dimmies for a while. So, I actually got a mate. He's um, well, best man at my, my wedding, so a good mate. He reckons he's never had a dim in his life, so. He's either lion or delusional, I reckon. Dimmy's a delicious food, whatever's in him, I don't know. But uh, yeah, Dimmy's in the Barbie, always a hit. Not that we have them that often. And I don't think we've had Dimmy's probably in a few months until last night. So back on the Dimmy bandwagon. Two. Dimmy's are ready. I reckon this. Good. Oh, well, that's it. That's it from the Dane Tree, I guess. What do we have? Dane Tree, New Beach, Port Douglas, Cape Trib, Bloomfield, Mossman, Mossman Gorge. So much to do, so much to see. The Dane Tree was a highlight for me. Absolutely spectacular scenery. Yeah, I agree. The agree. smells, the butterflies. I don't know. Loved it. Bloomfield was good. Wine stand for lunch. No, it's just a good part of the world. Like, um, you can see like it's pretty compact so you can see a lot of it pretty quickly we spent six nights two different places creek's edge our creek edge and new beach farm stay farm stay both completely different um but both really good we met some good people both of them as well so yeah yeah loved the area loved loved what we did there and uh heading north now yeah yep. starting to warm up anyway give us a like Subscribe if you want to, we'd appreciate if you did. And leave a comment, leave a comment on uh, Mum's felt tip hat. Oh my <laughs> God. See you next time. Cheers, guys.